Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we are talking about Core from Manticore. Now, we've actually talked about Core a couple of times on this channel, and today we're talking about it for good reasons. But first, a little bit of a backstory. Core was first released in Alpha back in April of, well, very, very end of April of 2020. And Core is a game creation platform built on top of Unreal Engine. And yeah, that's going to be relevant in a little bit. Now, I got to say, these kind of game engines are getting more and more common. You got the likes of Dreams, Roblox, Second Life, Modbox, and a few others out there. Basically, they are uh, game creation experiences, where games where you create games inside of games, essentially. And Core is kind of going a little bit more hardcore. You've got a little bit more, a pun not intended, by the way, a little bit more programming options, etc. in there. I did a hands-on with Core if you want to check that out. And later on in this video, I'll get to go hands-on with Core a little bit as well. So um, back in April, the first alpha, in July, they announced monetization program. This is actually a big deal because this means you can actually use Core to make money. And that's going to definitely attract more and more people. Speaking of attracting more and more people, we also got the AD&D Design a Dungeon Contest with Core. This was back uh, two months ago, I think. Uh, a number of well-known people were um, judges of this one. It ended September the 15th. So just about a week ago, and it was basically you use Core to create a D&D dungeon. Uh, it's definitely an interesting move on their behalf. And then we finally get to today's news. Core just got a $15 million investment. Now, the, the uh, headline here is a little misleading. Epic isn't 100% of the $15 million, but they're leading this round of investment. So uh, a number of companies have just invested more money in Manticore Games. They closed a $15 million funding round led by Epic Games and validating the vision and progress of Core, working towards an endless gaming multiverse. So our uh, mission is to release, uh, unleash a new wave of creativity in games by radically lowering the barriers to game creating and public publishing the same way YouTube revol revolutionized video creation. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, it's actually built on top of Unreal Engine, and that's part of what they like. So uh, the president of Epic Games, Adam Sussman, uh, Core is very impressive. At Epic, we believe the industry is ultimately headed to games becoming more like open platforms where creators can build their own worlds. Built in Unreal Engine Core exemplifies this future and goes one step further by providing the environment for anybody to create great multiplayer games and metaverse playgrounds where players discover endless entertainment. Now that metaverse, is that Ready Player One or is that Snow Crash? I think it was Snow Crash coined that term. I, I'm a Neuromancer fan, so I call it the Matrix. But everyone is slowly moving towards this idea of um, 3D-based uh, as the future of social networking. You actually even see it. Look at the drop of money that Oculus just put behind the Oculus Quest 2. They're losing money on every single one of these because obviously – Facebook sees VR and 3D as the future of this stuff, too. Uh, Score already has significant momentum. Last March, company opened the creators uh, platform to creators in the alpha phase. We already covered all this. They had their 1 million payout program and so on. Blah, 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 blah. Plus, they had D&D things. We're kind of getting into a repetition of what we have already covered. But yes, so Epic Games have led a round of funding in this. And Epic are kind of moving more and more into this space as well. Uh, they just announced that they're going to be doing a... Um, BTS party in Fortnite. Before that, they had Travis Scott in Fortnite. And this is sort of a, a, a step further in that direction. So if you're wondering what Core is all about, well, nicely, it is free. And if you're a gamer, you can just basically go grab Core and play with a number of games that the community have made. Now, it's getting more and more functionality over time, so there are limitations to what it is capable of doing, but it is an interesting tool in that regard. The one major downside to it is that there's not um, not really a lot of great options for uh, bringing your own art in from outside, you know, because they're trying to stay away from copyright problems. But you can use their own built-in modeling tools to do quite a bit. So here I'm going to show you a just really basic core creation. You start off, you could do an empty project, you could clone from an existing community project, or you could start from a framework. We'll do a framework here, and here you can see the type of games out of the box. You got dungeon crawlers, death matches, team death match, battle royale, last man standing, and so on. Various different ones available here. Let's do a dungeon crawler. I've never actually seen this one so we'll call this death trap in tribute to ian uh so here we go it's gonna go ahead and load everything up for us actually i have no memory of how long this actually takes. okay so it's quick so i won't bother waiting uh it's rendering out all of the things in thumbnail so i will let it do its pre-processing and be right back okay so everything is loaded welcome to core so here you can see 
it's a bit of a prototype of how you could create a dungeon style game, a dungeon crawler style game. You see, you've got equipment here, health, mana, abilities, and so on already predefined for you. Uh, we've got a couple of dungeons via portals defined right here. Uh, this is again just one kind of. Um, a template to work with. The editor and the experience is quite nice and straightforward. The graphics themselves are all um, basically Unreal Engine powered, so you've got a lot of uh, capability in that regard. Come on down here, you can see you've got a ton of different features here. So if you've got post-processing effects, you can drop in skies that you can drop in. And if you want to put something in here, if you want to change out that sky to, let's say, a sci-fi sky, boom, it's drag and drop. So this is designed to create uh, games in a manner that are really accessible to, to the masses. We start placing entities in the world. It's pretty much a matter, again, drag and drop. Everything has snapping and tools in place to make it easy to line things up. So you can move things around, automatic snapping in the world or snapping to other objects. It makes it really easy to create and populate worlds. If you want to go ahead and add logic to things, you can do so using the Lua programming language. Uh, it's obviously designed so that you can share your content and creations with other people. So you can, you can pull in uh, other spots or other stuff. So let's say if I wanted a gun, people always create guns. So let's search and find out what kind of guns we got. So here we go. Here's a gun. Oops, I missed. I typed the wrong one. All right, so we'll bring in this one anyway. So we wanted to bring in a gun from someone else. You can actually uh, save first. Okay, fine. You can actually bring in content that other people have created. Now, as I mentioned off the hop, you can't actually um, model in this, but you can create things. You, you've got, sorry, you can't import um, into this guy uh, from, say, like 3D Studios, Max or Blender or, or Maya or anything like that. But what you do have is some pretty complicated Boolean modeling tools. I show, showcased this in another video, so whereas this would have been created using the in-game modeling tools. So there's actually quite a bit of capability and functionality you could provide. And then, of course, Core themselves. So this is the community stuff we're looking at. Core themselves have provided a ton of stuff. So for example, if we need a door, there are all of the door options. And again, say we want a fantasy door there, you drop it in. But if you need a sound, you can basically drop that in as well. You can set triggers up, have that tr sound automatically play as you come through, have it um, handle off of different things. You have custom properties on things. And again, as I mentioned earlier on, you can control everything here using Lua-based scripting. And you, so you can more or less string things together to do whatever you want. You've also got control over the UI that is displayed. This one has its own uh, default already provided. Um, but yeah, uh, that's kind of the idea behind Core. I actually honestly have to say, working in Core is pretty fun. And, and if you're looking at um, just sort of figuring things out, if you're new to game development or you've got the basis of game development, you can do a heck of a lot with Core. Even if you're um, you know, a little bit more experienced, here you can see a number of different scripts here. Uh, so let's say, yeah, so... Uh, Kill feed control server. There you go. So here is an example of one of the Lua examples there. So you've got a full Lua programming language back there to back you up as well. And you, of course, can share scripts with each other. So if you want to have a door opening script that, you know, plays a sound, you can do so. You've also got some important um, tools and containers in here as well in the core content for things like proximity sensors and so on. So go here to game components, for example. You can see things like spawn points, first person camera, fall damage, health bars, and so on. And you, you can just basically, once again, implement them, drag and drop. Properties are available over here. Again, that's about the extent of detail I'm going to go into with core, just because I've covered it in the past, and that's not really the purpose of this video. But for those of you that were wondering, okay, what the heck is a core, and why would Epic, among others, invest $15 million in it? Well, that's your answer. So again, this is all powered by Unreal Engine behind the scenes. It is Unreal Engine powering everything here. That's why you're getting the nice graphical effects and so on. So if we come in here, I think there was a special effects area. Uh, any of the stuff you're hooking up. So the lighting. We bring lighting in. You can see it in real time, like so. That lighting, that is being powered by um, the Unreal Engine. So the graphic fidelity of this guy is quite good. The controls you have over things also are going to match up to quite a bit to the underlying um, equivalent stuff that you will get from Unreal Engine. So you can really create high-performance games using Core and get some pretty cool stuff going. Now, unfortunately, right now, the only publishing option I believe there is is on their own website, but there is some talk of making it so you can actually publish your Core creations out to Steam. Uh, so that's 
that's actually pretty cool in the end. Plus, they are doing some stuff to make it so that you can monetize your creations, as we mentioned earlier on. And it's going to basically just straight out be by people going in and playing because they're also doing, as you saw quickly, there's a shop here. Um, you can uh, have this community stuff, people making money to play core games at the top level, and then people that create core games, people that have the most popular core games based on the number of people that are actually playing these things. So for example, uh, if I wanted to go ahead and play Farmer's Market, which I'll let load up in the back room while we're talking, this play that I just did could earn that developer X amount of money from the overall pile of cash that's available for them. And here we see, and here is like, this kind of an example of what you could do with it. So there, here is a farming style game. You can see the UI all defined around the outside. So if I want to fish, I can fish. If I want to go through the tutorial, I go through the tutorial. If I want to go into barn storage, I can go to the barn storage. So you can create farm kind of games. You can create, in a lot of ways, you can create just about whatever you want. Now you're going to, again, if, you, if the out of the box art assets don't work for you, you're going to probably find yourself using uh, a lot of the, uh, mix and match component modeling stuff that you've got in there. But as you can see from this particular example, you can even get a slightly or a significantly different art style between projects. Whereas this one's got a flat shell shaded, sh I can't speak today, shell shaded, ah, cell shaded. There we go. I got it eventually. Look to it. Other ones have a more realistic look, whatever. It, it, it is an interesting idea. And they're also working towards having hub world. So you can transparently go from one to another to another. So you got like a sniper game and a Harvest Moon style game and all this other stuff in there. And the people, most popular games are actually getting paid. So there is a future here. As it gets more popular, will they keep paying out more money? Will they have more contests like they did with the D&D stuff? There is a lot of potential here. And I guess that would explain why Epic Games are getting involved. Also sort of makes sense that, uh, uh, you know, it's using Unreal Engine. So there is that too. So anyways, that is it. Manticore's core platform just got $15 million funding led by Epic Games. What do you think of core? What do you think of this investment? And what do you think of the entire idea of, you know, the metaverse or uh, the matrix kind of thing, this online gaming? Are we finally getting to this point? Because they've been talking about this since the 90s. Is it going to happen? Or are we looking at VRML version 3.0? Let me know. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later.